So we will continue our travels today. We have been in already many countries, twice in Norway, but now first time today in Hungary. And we have with us Miss Petra Ola, who is the senior product strategist at Supercharge. Great to have you with us, Petra. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. You know, they say that the Hungarian language and Finnish language, it's basically the same. So should we do this in Finnish? Yeah, an extra challenge for today. <laughs> so, well, I, I would stick with English for now, but actually it's true. It's a strange thing, but yeah. Yeah, it sounds in parts quite the same, but I, I need to work on my Hungarian before we can chat in your language. <laughs> but, but, but please tell us, um, how did you end up working with uh, digital health, healthcare products? Mm. Uh, I have a background in industrial design engineering, and uh, I always wanted to do products that make us live better and, and smarter. So I specialized in, in designing healthcare products. And um, over the years, I was shifting from designing physical products to, to the digital ones because I was just fascinated by the, the opportunities of this digital world and also the speed of innovations. So here am I. What do you see as the biggest challenges when working with, when developing and working with uh, new products for, or digital products for, especially healthcare? Well, I think designing digital products is it's never easy. Um, the biggest challenge um, is due to the complexity of the healthcare system and the fact that it is already an existing system. So to make a change and um, and create improvements, we have to move a lot of people. Uh, so this is why uh, we developed a method uh, that I'm going to present today that can help us uh, to design uh, more adaptable products for the healthcare industry. Nice chatting with you, Petra, and now we will enjoy your presentation. So the stage is yours. Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. Again, I am Petra, Petra Ola, working as a product strategist at an innovation agency, Supercharge, which means I get to work with a lot of clients on digital product development. And today I'm really excited to be here and use this channel to share the insights we gained over this project and also a method that we, de we, that we developed uh, that can help uh, you creating uh, more adaptable products for the healthcare industry. Um, so yeah, well, on a daily basis, we are approached by clients, institutions, startups asking for our expertise in digital product development. Sometimes they have an idea already, um, but they ask our help to turn that into a, which, a successful product. Or they have a product, but they experience some problems with it. So the users are not using the product or they just stop using it after a while. So consequently, it doesn't meet the targets, neither the, the business ones nor the impact ones. Uh, so we are faced with these problems, but actually I like to think about them as symptoms. So we need to dig deeper to find the core problems. So when we get these cases, we are start doing analysis and we ask like why the product is not making an impact, why users not using it. And there could be many reasons why a product fails, um, but to avoid it, we need to answer two questions. So what do we want actually our product to achieve and what factors can influence the success of the solution? So let's look at what's up with the healthcare products. The purpose usually of healthcare products is to improve health management, optimize uh, existing workflows or create uh, healthy lifestyles and habits. Improving means uh, fostering positive uh, change. So every new digital solution, new technology uh, needs to be adapted uh, by the healthcare system and also the people uh, part of the system. And uh, it is already a challenging goal, and we even have to deal with uh, the complexity of the healthcare industry. 
So yeah, healthcare is complex, as I mentioned before, because of the diversity of the tools, the multiple stakeholders we have to design for, and we also have to take into consideration the variation of the physical environment. We have to fit in the products to the busy workflows uh, uh, of people. So that's why we need to uh, design for behavior change. Uh, while considering all the uh, elements of the healthcare work system. You might think it's easier said than done, and you are right. It takes quite some practice to keep uh, this holistic approach. So to make it easier uh, today, I would like to share a five-step habit forming approach with you that we developed at uh, Supercharge. And this approach can make you more successful as a designer or an innovator or in any role really in creating uh, digital products uh, for positive change. So what should you do? The first step is to define the desired behavior. Sometimes, especially designers, we are so much into solving the problem, uh, thinking of new features that we forget about what do we want our users to do. Uh, do we want them to, to uh, collect points or earn badges or register taking the medication? Well, actually, what we want them to do is to form a habit to take the medications regularly. This is important to get this right because we're going to build the whole product around this. So after we define the desired behavior, we need to identify triggers. Trigger is something that will activate the correct behavior. For example, a notification uh, that will tell you to take your medication. Um, these triggers are quite important, especially at the beginning of this habit forming process, because that will make you to do the action. Um, to make this prompt really successful, it has to be delivered at a good time and a good place, actually when the user can perform uh, the action. After we are done with this, we have to make the task of the user simple. Um, the likelihood that the user will perform an action, uh, it's closely related to the complexity, uh, they, um, complexity of, the, of the task. So our task is to make uh, the action as simple as possible. We have to translate the difficult topics in a way that it makes sense to them and also to break the complicated tasks down to so-called baby steps. Uh, simplifying uh, the actions already can increase users' motivation to uh, change their behavior. Besides that, there are many other techniques uh, to boost the user's motivation and we have to really use them. Because we can be very passionate about solving a problem and we assume that the user is also just as motivated to hold a new uh, medication tracking app uh, in their hand. Uh, well, but it's not always true. So the users might not be even aware of the problem or it is just not important enough uh, for them to start using the product. So we should highlight the purpose of the app and the benefits they can gain with it, uh, changing their behavior. The last thing um, is to do is to make the habit stick by giving reinforcements. So reinforcement is something um, uh, that triggers the people's uh, dopamine system. When uh, they get a positive uh, response after a good behavior, this will increase uh, the possibility that they continue doing uh, the habit and really achieve improvements. So this would be the five uh, step approach. Uh, to design successful uh, habit forming um, products. And because we need to deal with the complexity of the healthcare system, I would like to add one more thing. We need to utilize the knowledge in the team. I believe that innovation is a team effort and uh, designing something for healthcare requires special domain knowledge. So we designers are good at creating a beautiful user experience. Um, but we are not uh, medical experts, we don't have the medical knowledge. So therefore, I would like to encourage every innovator to collaborate with healthcare products when you are designing something for the healthcare industry. This will lead to solutions that are truly adaptable uh, by the healthcare system and also by the people uh, working in the system. We have some time, so let's uh, get practical. Uh, to make the application of this approach, I just, I just mentioned, um, uh, we created uh, a design canvas 
this is how it looks. So every time when we have to uh, design something for behavior change, we are using this uh, visual checklist as a guidance. And now with an example quickly, I'm going to show you how you can use it in practice. So let's imagine that we are uh, working at a pharmaceutical company and we would like to encourage patients to pay more attention to their health and take the medication, their medication regularly. So we start uh, thinking of a solution uh, and use this uh, behavior canvas um, to guide us through on this five uh, step habit forming approach. So first, the canvas guides us to define the desired behavior. We fill in the blanks. So in this case, uh, grandma needs to take uh, the medication, three types of medication, two times a day, one in the morning, one in the evening. Um, so we have to find a trigger uh, for that that will make her to do it. Um, so again, here we are getting some guiding questions. And uh, to find the right trigger, um, we go through them. During the research, we figured out, for example, that grandma is taking a coffee every morning at 7 a.m., exactly the time when she should uh, take the medication. So we can use this uh, as a trigger and provide a notification exactly at the time. So now let's make sure uh, that the action is really easy for her. And to figure that out, first we have to think of what can make it uh, difficult for grandma to take the medication. Maybe she doesn't know what pills to take and when, or, um, or she runs out of medication sometimes, so physically she cannot uh, take these uh, pills. Luckily, if there is something uh, that uh, UX-driven digital technology excels in is to make complicated tasks easier for the user. So at this case, we could reduce the cognitive load by, um, by just listing the medication she has to take and only the one she has to take in the morning, uh, or the app could track her stock and uh, just send uh, a notification to the pharmacy and, and order uh, the medication automatically. And after we simplify this action, um, we can use some techniques to further increase her motivation. There are numerous techniques designed to increase people's motivation. Here we are listing in this canvas six uh, techniques, like um, letting the users set some goals, visualize progress, use social support, or raise their curiosity and give incentives. So the last step we have um, is to help her help grandma to make this habit stick. Again, in this canvas, we can find four uh, reinforcement methods, um, like giving instant feedback right after the action, visualize the progress, make rewards variable, and use the power of social support. As you see, uh, using this canvas really guides our decision making and uh, helps us to think in a structured way. We can zoom out and keep a holistic view and this canvas format is also good to facilitate collaboration. I just mentioned that it is really important, especially at healthcare products. So it can be just put in the middle of the table and people can use it during an ideation session. Or even when we are presenting the concepts to other stakeholders, it just can give a nice outline to do that. Using this uh, canvas, and also the approach can give some uh, extra tasks for us. Um, but already at this simple example, I'm sure we learned something and we discovered something that we shouldn't have and that will make the product more successful and the users more satisfied in the end. So imagine how much we can win when we want to form a complex habit and affect a lot more people. So when you are thinking about to design a new digital solution, or uh, to start even designing it, just keep this holistic approach, uh, for habit forming approach in the back of your mind. Your design process, I'm sure it will be more efficient, the product will be more adaptable, and uh, thereby you can achieve more positive health and also business outcomes. But this is what I wanted to share today. Uh, I hope you learned something new. I was Petra and thank you for your attention.